The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome. So many uh, uh, guests, friends, family in our midst. We are so happy that you're here. Um, I think it's because there might be something special happening today. Three babies, actually three grandmothers who have been really good friends, right? And then their daughters grew up. And now they're bringing their children to church. It's such a joy and a gift to our community that you would, you would, you know, plan your Thanksgiving weekend to be with us. So we're so grateful for you to be here with us in our midst. I'm Pastor Jenny. We're here at St. Paul's in New Cumberland. If you're joining us online, welcome. Good morning. Please do say hello. Dave's behind the wheel, and he'll greet you back and say good morning. As well, if you have any prayer requests, he'll take those down, and we'll share them at the time of prayers. I have gone around to a few folks. Typically on a Sunday morning, I'll check in with everybody, but there's a lot of you today, which is a great thing. Did everybody get a little coin thingy yeah if you didn't make sure you um, check in with the boss in the back that would be the uh, ushers okay here are some of the prayer requests and then I'll get to the announcements we're gonna pray for the family of Kenneth Dale Wickham who was laid to rest um, at Indian Town Gap this week and for Robin Green family um, who died I think was it on Thanksgiving Cheryl Yes, okay. That's kind of a tough holiday to lose somebody. All right, and my friend Marty Pano, who we've been praying for and had his uh, second stem cell infusion, um, his wife Deb contacted me on Thanksgiving, said, we got a Thanksgiving miracle. We came home. So they're home from the hospital, and we give thanks to God for that. I went looking for you, Anita, online, and I saw that you were served some delicious turkey. So Anita's been in John Hopkins in uh, Baltimore for the better part of a couple months, uh, recovering from surgery due to cancer, and she is healing. She's a member of our council, and she even comes to those meetings in Zoom, believe it or not, from her hospital bed. Talk about commitment. <laughs> We've been asked to pray for Linda. We'll keep her in our prayers. Her daughters are here with us today. We're so glad that you're here. And I've been asked to pray for the Chauncey baby who's in ICU. It's no fun having a baby in the hospital. And for Doug Stepp, who's also been in the hospital. And, you know, when you're there for a long time, it can feel like you just want to be done already. So we're going to pray for his will to live. Okay. And then I've been asked to pray for the folks that have been released from Hamas and those who are still yet to be released and of course that entire war-torn part of our world that uh, impacts our lives so very much. All right, here are some of the announcements for our community. You can find more of them in the back of the bulletin. Advent begins next week, believe it or not. And this year is year A, so we go A, B, C. Matthew was year A. Anybody know what year B is? Oh, you're a ringer. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. So ne next week we'll start with the book of Mark, which means if you'd like to start the church year with us, you can read through the gospel of Mark. We also have Advent um, devotionals that take you through each day of Advent. If you haven't already, have you seen all the different kinds of things they are selling for Advent? Like you can get a Lego Advent now. Right? I, when we were kids, it was like, yes, chocolate if they were in there. If there wasn't anything in there, you fought over what. Anyway. Okay, next week, where's Jean? We have, we have um, pictures, right, at Christ in Allison Hill. And you'd like us all to bring chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> you want us all to bring cookies, right? See, I knew that was the choice. But any kind of cookies, and if anybody is free and wants to come that day and help out, we can use the help there, right, that day?
Yes, Matthew Best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's an it's a very progressive congregation. They care for the poor and they even have free dental clinics and things for anyone who needs care, right? That can't afford it. Yeah. So thank you, Jean and Dave, who's the photographer. We're grateful for your ministry there in our sister congregation. Is Christy here? Where's Christy? Good morning, Christy. We want to say thank you to you and Karen for your special gift of music today. I'm looking forward to it. We, I chopped a couple of parts out of the service because I knew we were going to have some great music and a lot of baptism. So I'm, we're looking forward to your gifts. Thank you. On December 10th, the congregation will gather after the service for a call vote. That's information in the back of your bulletin as well. I've been serving here since 2019 as a, um, a contracted pastor through the bishop's office. But the congregation is going to vote to call me as the pastor here on the 10th. At least that's my hope. We're going to call me to be the pastor again. <laughs> okay. And I spoke with Karen about Christmas Eve, which is a Sunday. We're looking for a concert volunteers. We've got several already. If you're available and you're in the area on Christmas Eve, it's an amazing gift of music. Uh, Karen's husband brings his saw and plays music on the saw. It's quite spectacular. <laughs> and we have our, our brass folks who pull out their uh, brass instruments, dust them off after last year, <laughs> and play for us again. And we give you thanks for that too. All right. As you may have heard me note in the liturgy, everything is found for you in the bulletin. There is no Old Testament reading or psalm today because of all of the uh, added materials that we have in there. The gospel is a very, very famous one. That's why you have a little goat and a sheep. My goat looks annoyed. What is yours doing? Everybody's got a little different goat. <laughs> some goats are dancing, some are, one's even carrying a little flower, you know. And then the sheep, one's just kind of looking at you, one's, one's also dancing, and another one's kind of flying. So, that is a very famous reading that you're going to hear today. Um, what I want to kind of prepare you for with that is, if you've ever had teenagers, just wait, you parents of little ones, when you go on a trip, your last words are always, don't think you're having a party at my house while I'm away, because you know I will find out and there'll be consequences. So kind of keep that in your mind as you're hearing this last story from Jesus as he's about to head to the cross. All right. Those are all the announcements that I have. Are there any from the community that need to be shared? Any prayer requests that I've missed that we should share? If not, then please stand with me as we make the sign of the cross over our bodies and call upon God's name. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. There are kneelers if you'd like to kneel, or you may stand or be seated as you're comfortable for a moment of silence to reflect before God, before our worship. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides our beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. 
Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promise prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. It's our tradition to stand as we sing, so we're going to enter into song. You, Lord, are both lamb and shepherd. Let us pray together. O oh God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right, and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the hearing of the word. The reading is from Ephesians chapter 1. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ 
when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. you and the king will answer them truly I tell you just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family you did it to me then he will say to those at his left you that are accursed depart from me and enter into your eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels for I was hungry and you gave me no food I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked and you did not clothe me sick and in prison and you did not visit me then they will also answer Lord when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you then he will answer them truly I tell you just as you did not do it to one of the least of these you did not do it to me and these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life the gospel of the Lord praise to you O Christ I mean you can't help but think that's like a, a dad going you screw around man there will be serious consequences no messing up in my house right so this is Jesus final uh, little message we've heard three kind of uh, interesting passages over the past three Sundays from the 25th chapter of Matthew uh, to his friends this is not just to everybody out there he's talking to his closest friends as he's about to head off to the cross this is one of those moments where I'm wondering as you look at your coin do you feel like you're the sheep like yay I've been taking care of everybody in fact, I already got all my Christmas shopping done. You feeling that sheep? <laughs> I've been taking care of even the poor people. I put a little something in that little bell ringer, lady, bell ringer person at the grocery store. I took care of people. Is that you? Are you feeling like a goat? <laughs> I'm never going to make it. <laughs> Not based on being good enough for God to say, yep, you're a sheep. Come on, get over here. Well, hold that. Hold that little thought in your head for a minute. I want to share a poem 
Even though Jim Folkroad always tells me, poems just aren't for me, Pastor Jenny. <laughs> I think this one he'll like, along with you. It's by Steve Garnass Holmes, and it's called Ode to the Awkward. To the one who limps, who is the poor dancer, who hesitates at the escalator, who smacks their elbow on the door jams, praise. To you who never get the jokes, who have failed at love, who feel odd in every group, to you who hate to introduce yourself, be honor and glory. You who have dropped the whole casserole of your life splat on the floor, who believe you have nothing to say, whose handshake is limp as old celery, blessed are you. Losers and misfits and three-legged dogs, praised be you who try anyway. For you have the courage to be what we fear and free of shine or polish. Gleam with the radiance of the one whose glory is not divided, making us brave to attempt that most holy and amazing feat to be ourselves. That's all you're called to be. God knows that you're a mess. Right? God knows us deep down inside. When you have kids, you're always worried about that stuff. Will I mess it up? Will they be okay? I mean, they are perfect as little ones, aren't they? But I'm not perfect. <laughs> Maybe not. I mean, they still poop, don't they? And they cry when you're tired. And they grow up to be a mouthy 14-year-old, which I have. And they fail. And they fall down. And they try new things that they're scared of. We're glad that they're trying new things, aren't we? Because we don't want them to fail or fall down. That's normal. That's the protective side of us, but it's just a fact. Sometimes you smack your elbow on the door jam, or you drop the whole casserole. Anybody do that this Thanksgiving? Whew, made it through everything? It's just life. And when life hits you, it can be difficult to look up from that mess and see anybody else. You walk past the ones that are locked up in systems that we all have to live in. You hoard toilet paper. Anybody do that over COVID? Or jugs of water because you're afraid. We're not sure that those things will be around if we don't take it and as much of it as we can get. As far as seeing Jesus in the driver next to us who seems to be butting their way in line ahead of us, in traffic, well, heck no. I don't see Jesus there, do you, in them? In fact, I might have a signal or a sign or a word for them that I shouldn't repeat in church. It's just real down here, you know? Right, Lord? Do you mean to say that you're in those people there? The ones who say political things that make me crazy? Jesus is in them? And the non-Christians, you mean you're in that person too? I mean, I've only been told that you're only in Christians. Maybe you're saying that you're everywhere. And you need to be aware that my actions speak about how I really see myself. Because that must mean that I've got you in me too, as other in others interact with me. And maybe I should be kinder to myself as well. Well, dang, I guess that means I'm not just a goat that gets it all wrong, but I'm also a sheep that stumbles and needs a good shepherd to lift me up from the craggy places where I find myself wandering into. As a matter of fact, as Lutherans, we don't say you're a saint or a sinner. We say you're a saint 
And I, not, I have another ringer in the room. I heard you, Jim. The other Jim. <laughs> You're a saint and a sinner. We're both. You get to be both. And that brings me to an interesting observation of this last Sunday of the church year, Christ the King Sunday. This final teaching of Jesus as he heads to the cross, where he will be sentenced to death with the title King of the Jews. It's about being a king who sits on a throne of his glory. As the king, Jesus separates sheep and goat based upon their actions not their statements of belief or their church attendance. He didn't say, those of you who came to Sunday school your whole life to the right, did he? That's not what he's saying in this message. What he teaches them is that they are to follow what he's lived with them over the past few years together. Your life is to be a life of healing, to speak a word of peace, in the middle of trauma, to be generous with who you are and all that you have, to be hospitable to others and care for them. Now, you're not called to be perfect. If anybody's perfect, please come and see me. Or if you know one of the members of your family who's perfect, send them to me. I'd like to find out how to do it. And sometimes you're going to be this goat. What's GOAT stand for? You know this from sports. The, yep, the greatest of all time at messing things up. <laughs> That's our GOAT. But God has a way of transforming even those things that are horrible. For example, the crucifixion. He turns that cross into a way of freedom and life. His death on the cross changes the instrument of death. Now it's a symbol. Anybody have a cross that they wear? That cross is now a symbol that even the worst death, such as death on a torture cross, cannot keep the love of God down. That's why we wear crosses in our faith system, because it reminds us that nothing can hold back God's love, not even the threat of death. Nope, not long after sharing this parable of the sheep and goats with his friends, Jesus goes to that cross. Then after he dies on the cross, we confess this, and you'll hear it in the service, that Jesus descends to hell. Why? Not because he did something wrong, but to set the prisoners there that are stuck free, to open the gates. In fact, scripture tells us even the gates of hell cannot prevail against the power of love from God. He sets the prisoner free, then he rises from the dead and returns to his friends to tell them that nothing will hold back God's love for anything in creation. Even then, at the end of the gospel, some who walked with Jesus, tell, it, scripture tells us, even then, some of them doubted this. It can't be that God loves us that much, because I know what a goat I am. And Jesus said, nope. I know every one of you by name. I know how many hairs are on your head. You don't know that. You're my sheep. What Jesus says to the separated sheep and goats, that doubt, for those of us who stand there thinking, hmm, I'm one of them goats, even that won't keep you from inheriting the kingdom that was prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. It's your identity as a sheep, one of God's own flock, that you can't change. And if I had children for a children's message, I'd be telling them, can a, can a bunny give birth to a snake? No. A sheep gives birth to a sheep. You're all sheep. You may think you got horns like a goat. A couple of us even think we have horns that hold up our halos. Today, three children are being brought forward to be claimed, to be sealed by the cross of Christ forever on their forehead, to be told that God loves them, 
what God has been saying over and over to everything that God has made. You're mine, and I love you. I've prepared a place for you, Owen, Sophia, and Riley. You're going to fall down, and you're going to get up again. Dare to be the one I created you to be. Love like life depends on it. Your life and the rest of this world hangs in the balance because what you do in this life matters. Your kindness, your life will change the world and it impacts God. Your life touches God's life. When you fall, when you fail, Trust that you have a shepherd who knows your name, who calls you by your name, who loves your, you fiercely enough to die for you and to lead you home when that time comes. Don't be afraid, child of God. So now again with that coin in your hand, sheep or goat, where do you find yourself today? I see myself as a goat, stubborn, unseeing sometimes, often imagining myself as the greatest of all time failures. But mine's kind of looking over at the other side of the coin. Because I have a shepherd who knows me, who knows you, like a shepherd knows a sheep by its name. This shepherd has gone to live in a place ahead of us. Yet while I have breath on this life, in this life, I will follow the call to live out as the best me that I can be. How about you? Keep your coin, if you like, to remind you that God loves you and calls you to live a life of love and service, whether you're feeling a little goat-like or sheep-like. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for these children being brought forward Sometimes, yeah, kids can make us crazy. And they are the greatest of all time at doing it. <laughs> but we give you thanks, Lord God, because we know in actuality they're, they're little sheep, your sheep. Each one of us are and that you love us. You call us by name and remind us to be refreshed, to come and be fed at the table. Like you've called families together over Thanksgiving, you call us into your meal week after week to remember again, you're part of my family. I love you. We're like one body, you and me. We share in everything. And when I see you, I see me because you've been built in my image. And I love you, child of God. Don't be afraid. Your mind. Amen. So I'm going to remind the families that we have a hymn that we'll sing. Um, this one is, Oh Christ, What Can It Mean for Us? And during that time, those that are coming forward for the baptism just kind of gather around here at the front. And when the song is over, the rest of you may be seated, okay? Please stand together as we sing the hymn of the day.
seated. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Riley, Sophia, and Owen baptized into Christ? If so, then say, I do. Great. As you bring Riley, Sophia, and Owen to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities. And these are those responsibilities. You have it in writing so you can read it later if you don't hear it now, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of noise and activity going on up here. We are called to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer and the Creed and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, to nurture them in faith and prayer, so that they may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, and to care for others and the world that God made, and to work for justice and peace. That's a lot for a baby. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like she's ready to read it all to you. They'll read it to you again later. Yeah. Do you, as parents, promise to help Riley and Sophia and Owen grow in our Christian faith and life? If so, then say, I do. People of God, do you promise to support Riley and Sophia and Owen and pray for them in their new life in Christ? If so, then say, we do. All right, folks, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Would you kindly pour some water into the font for me as I read? And I'm going to ask the kids to come forward hip here in a minute. So are you ready? You can come up now if you're ready. All right. Really? Okay. Do you want to come up too? You want to help us up here? So she's pouring water in there, and you guys are going to just blow. Can you like on, like on a birthday candle? You know what to do? Can you blow on that water while she's pouring? Okay. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters. Can you blow a little air over the waters? Come on, go ahead and blow some air up here. Yeah. He might be a little short for blowing on that water there. Here we go. Lila, you want to come up? Yeah, go ahead. You want to help too? Can I pick you up? Will that be all right? No? Okay. Got it. I'm glad you set your boundaries. All right. 
For in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be honor and glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. All right, Riley, are you here? We need you and your paperwork here. Where's Riley's? All right. Okay. Riley, uh, Riley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. Oh, you found the water. <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Yay, Sophia. Could you hold her head over the water? Sophia, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Ooh, I got you all good, didn't I? All right, here you go. You're welcome. All right, Owen, you're up, buddy. Hello. <laughs> Owen, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here you go. I got more for you in a minute. <laughs> yeah, you did great. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. I think we're going to have to go to them. They've made a nice little line up over there. Okay. Can you hold that too? And can I have the babies kind of closer in here? All right, friends. I'm going to put my hands over you and pray for you, all right? Sustain Riley. <laughs> oh, you want my hand, yeah. And Sophia and Owen with the gift of your Holy Spirit. With the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. I have to turn the page. <laughs> I know it's a busy world up here, isn't it? <laughs> okay. All right, Owen. Here we go. Owen, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Christ forever. And Miss Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> you just are so full of joy today. Yes, you are. Sophia, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and mar marked with the cross of Christ forever. And Miss Riley. Riley, child of God. You are smiling today too, aren't you? Yeah. Riley, child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. <laughs> Amen. All right, the parent who is free of a child in their arms, or with the exception of you, please take the candle that's over there, and you're going to light that candle and bring it in front of the babies. And we're going to stand to the side so everybody can see you do that. Thanks. You'll say that. Mm -hmm. So if you light the candle and then take it over in front of the babies so they can see it.
you just light it from that Paschal candle. He really wants to help. <laughs> He's like, I got it, Dad. And Jan, will you read the welcome to these families, please? Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Thank you. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We, we welcome, welcome you, you into, into the, the body, body of Christ, Christ and into, into the mission we share. Join, join us in giving thanks, thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Before we have, you know, a chance to blow out those candles and, you know, I usually carry a baby, but with three it's a little hard. So you're going to have to carry them back out there so everybody can see your babies. Um, there are gifts from the parish for you, including scripture, so that you can share the Bible with your children and the prayers that come with them. There's a certificate and some other devotional materials. So please do take out the candle, and every year on Thanksgiving weekend, you can have another celebration, like a birthday party with presents. Yeah, that would be wonderful to remember your baptismal day. You may extinguish your candles. Let us give thanks to God for this incredible gift in our community. Please return to your seats and community. I'll invite you to stand as we continue our time of prayer time of worship with prayer. You can take them now or later as you wish. Oh, thank you. As we're preparing for prayer, we have a, a, a member that comes to church week after week, and we're so um, grateful for her presence. But she's, Jenny has let us know that she had a fall this week, and she, that she slipped on the floors and hit her nose. Oh, God love her. So we'll be praying for Jenny this week as well. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath, and our life as we pray for the church, for the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, from Christ we receive your call to feed, clothe, and welcome. Direct your church to respond to this call with faithfulness and generous love. We pray for the work of the ELCA World Hunger and the partnerships that we have with Global Feeding Ministries. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In Christ, the rock of our salvation, we are brought into union with all of creation, with mountains, seas, dry lands, and animals of the field. We seek your guidance and protection. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In Christ, we know merciful judgment, Guide rulers of every nation in ways of humble leadership and wise decision-making. We pray especially for those war-torn places uh, and for those who are being held, um, like those who are being held by Hamas. Lord, please let them free that they might know life again. Allow aid to come to all who are underserved, like those Palestinian families, and care to any who are neglected. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, we feel the depth of your love and care toward us. Nourish all who hunger, connect any who are isolated, and surround all who experience rejection or abuse. We pray for those who are suffering. Within our community, we lift especially before you Peggy Warmkessel, Anita and Joanne Painter, Hannah, Trudy Stamm, Loey Parker, Steve Nock, Judy Hunt, Edsel, Debbie Aldridge, the Holden family, Anna, Kathy Miller, Marty Pano, Jenny's mom and her sister, and Jenny herself, Marty and Paul Sheffer, Ken, Judy Smith and family, Bob and Maggie Fogelman, Sonia, Marie, Pam Murray, Shauna, Ken Lytle, Dave and Holly Kutz, John Van Brakel. We also lift before you Linda, and the Chauncey baby in the hospital. We pray for John Stepp as he is also in the hospital. And those we name before you in our hearts now. Mm -hmm. 
be their rest and comfort. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In Christ, we are made the people of his pasture. Inspire the outreach and social ministries of this congregation. We pray especially for the new children in our community as the body of Christ. We give you thanks for these three children, for Riley, for Sophia, and Owen, and their parents and grandparents and family. We pray for all people who serve and attend to the needs of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, in Christ we are welcomed home. We praise you for the faithful witness of those who have served you and extended your welcome and love to us. And we remember those who have died in faith. We pray especially for the family of Kenneth Dale Wickham and for the family of Robin Green. Unite us with them as one body of Christ. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. In our community, we share that peace. You're welcome to hug, shake, or just do the peace sign, whatever you're most comfortable with. And when you're finished, you may be seated um, in preparation for the Eucharist. Peace be with you. To those of you who are online with us today for worship, please do say peace be with you, and I'm sure Dave will respond back to you.
As we prepare for the meal, I want to let you know that all are invited to the table. It's not mine, it's the Lord's, so all are welcome to God's table. There is, um, there are pieces of bread that are used, or uh, sorry, gluten-free for those who need something gluten-free. Just let me know. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to boldly pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table.
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey, strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children, and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Amen.